Hello students. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Miss Hu. I am a high school physics teacher. I've created this video for the reference of my students because uh, I did assign them some homework and they got some of the answers wrong. So this is just to go through uh, what the correct answer should be. If, this, if you feel that this video benefits and helps you uh, in terms of understanding derived quantities, please feel free to watch this video to help you as well. So to my students, the reason I've created this video is because I know that some of you have problems understanding how to solve this homework. So I've created this video so that you can play and replay at your convenience. If there's something you don't understand, you can always just you know loop it back and replay over again. Or even if in the future you have forgotten how to solve these kind of questions, you can always come back to this video and watch it again. All right, so. Uh, let's go into the answers, but before we go into that, I first need to go through with you the concepts of base quantity once again. So I'm going to create, uh, let's use the text function here. Let's talk about base quantities. Let me just adjust the text here. Now, as you know, there are seven base quantities that exist in the world. I'm just going to write them all here. There's length, time, temperature, mass, current. Uh, let's see, we've also got luminous intensity and amount of matter. Let me just uh, adjust the text so that it looks a little bit better on the screen. Now, there are, whoops, I didn't press enter here. Let me just correct that. So there are seven base quantities that exist in this world. Although in your syllabus, we will not be using the last two. We won't be using luminous intensity and amount of matter, but you need to be aware of their existence. Right? We are going to focus on the top five, though. These are the seven base quantities, and you also need to know the SI units. Now, as we know, many of these different quantities have uh, different units you can use. So, for example, length can be expressed in uh, many different units. For example, you can express length in centimeters, millimeters, kilometers, even inches, feet, and miles. But for physics, in your syllabus, we need to focus on the SI unit. So I'm going to scribble that over here. The SI unit for length is meters. I'll write the short form here, M. Time is seconds. Temperature is Kelvin. Mass, kilogram. Current is ampere. Now, luminous intensity is a candela, and amount of matter is mole. So we, although we don't use these two, you do need to know about their uh, existence, and you need, need to know what the SI units are. All right, so let's go to our homework. So in this case, we are asked to express the derived quantities in terms of base quantities and SI base units. First of all, before you express it in the base quantities, you do need to know the formula for these derived quantities. Now, in this case for volume, let's use blue for clarity. So let's take the volume of a cube. Normally, when you want to calculate the volume of a cube, it would be written as length times width times height. But let's express this using the terms from the list of these base quantities. So instead of writing it as width and height, let's stick to length. So it becomes length times length times length. So as you can see, there's uh, three multiples of length, which means that it actually becomes length cubed. We'll write it in short form. Instead of writing length, let's use the letter L to represent length. That's length cubed. And that's what you write here in the formula for the base quantities. Let me use black so that it's easier to see. So if V is volume, you express it as L cube. Now in terms of the SI base units, you need to use the SI unit for these base quantities. Now length is meters, which means that it's meters times meters times meters. Same thing, you get it three times. And that's how you get meter cube. That's what you write over here, meter so some of you have gotten confused between base quantities and base units. You need to recognize what these terms mean. So base quantities refer to the names given to these things which you are measuring, like the length, the time, temperature, mass, current, luminous intensity, amount of matter. Unit is the way you express the value, which would be meter, seconds, kil uh, Kelvin, kilogram, ampere, candela, mole. For example, if the length is 10 meters, that's the value. You express the value using the units. So that is the difference. So the base quantity here is based on the name of that thing you're measuring, just length. 
and this is the unit how you measure the value for density in order to express it in the base and uh, base quantities and SI base units, you also need to, of course, know the formula. Density formula is mass over volume. Now, this is the correct formula, but for this particular piece of work, I want you to express it in base quantities. Volume is not a base quantity. You need to express this formula using these terms. So instead of writing as mass over volume, we now know that volume is length cubed. So I want you to substitute that into this formula. So this becomes mass over length cubed. So if you write it in short form, m as mass, l as length, you get m over l cubed, and that's how you express it in this answer. Rho is the uh, symbol that represents density, so this becomes m divided by l cubed. In terms of the SI base units, mass Unit is kilogram, L is meters, and because it's cubed, it becomes meter cubed. That's how you get the unit of kilogram per meter cubed. Now, some of you wrote it as gram per cm cubed. This is the correct unit for density, it is. But that's not the answer for this question because this, these are not SI units. Right? Gram is not an SI unit, cm is not an SI unit. You need to use kilogram and meters. Okay, so do not use this for the SI units. Also, some of you uh, want to write negative 3, which is fine. You can write it as kilogram per meter cubed this way. Let me just uh, put a divider there to make it clear. Now, when you want to write it this way, it's either or. So you either write it as a slash or you write a negative. Do not do this. Some of you did this. This is you can't combine slash and negative in the same expression, yeah? Because if you do this, this cancels each other out. Because it becomes divide negative is actually equivalent to kilogram times meter cube, which is also wrong. So don't do this. Okay, this is not correct. It's either or not combine both. Next, for speed. Speed, as we know, the formula is distance over time. To express this using the base quantity distance is the same thing as length so you write it as length over time or short form l over t and that's what you write over here speed is l over t now uh, there's no for, uh, there's no symbol that represents speed it's not s s is for displacement so we'll just write speed in full over here in terms of the si base unit length is meters and time is second so that's how you get meters per second so again, you can write it as m slash s, or you can write it this way, m s power of negative 1. Just like before, either or do not combine the slash and the negative in the same expression. Some of you wrote uh, kilometers per hour. This is a correct unit for speed, but it's not the SI unit. So don't write this. Okay, It's meters per second. For acceleration, I've given you the formula here, which is speed over time. But you can't leave this as your answer because speed is not a base quantity. Remember, your base quantities are only the seven in this list. So to express this, now we know that speed is length over time. So substitute that as length over time divided by time. So length over time divided by time, you'll end up getting length divided by time squared or L over T squared. For those of you who are good at math, you can probably already see how this becomes this. But for those of you who can't see, let me show you step by step. If you have length divided by time, divided by time again, you can do this. Length over time, this becomes 1 over T. So when you multiply, L times 1 becomes L, T times T becomes T squared. So that's how you get it. So you express it here. Acceleration, which is A, is length over time squared. In terms of the base units, because length is meters and time is second, second squared, you end up getting meters per second squared. So that's how you get meters per second squared. Or you can write it as ms power of negative 2. 
Okay. Yes. By the way, in case you're wondering, yeah, we don't we don't normally calculate acceleration this way. We do count it as speed over time. But the reason why you need to learn how to break it down to base quantities is because from these base quantities, you can find the unit for that particular quantity. So this is how you got meters per second squared. By using this method, it's easier for you to find the correct unit. Lastly, for force, force formula is mass times acceleration. But acceleration is not a base quantity. So you need to rewrite this. We have already found that acceleration is length over time squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite that here. We'll just put m as mass times l over t squared. And that's your answer. You can even write it just this way, m l over t squared. And that's the formula in base quantities. So in terms of the SI base units, because we're looking for base, you got to write down the unit for each of this. So mass is kilogram, length is meters, time is second, and it's squared. So you end up getting kilogram meters per second squared. So you can write this as kilogram meters slash second squared, or you can write it as kgms power negative 2. Remember, either or. Now, although this is the correct unit for force, we don't normally write the force unit this way. So what's the unit for force? That's right, it's Newton. So that's the specific SI unit that we are looking for. So I hope that this video has helped you understand how to express the derived quantities in terms of the base quantities and SI base units. So if you like this video, please don't forget to click like and hit subscribe in order to get updates on more videos just like this to help you understand physics better. Thank you for watching and happy studying.